My name is Tiffany Matloub, and I'm the global head of creator community at YouTube Shorts. And I have these incredible creators with me here who are going to talk about leveling up on Shorts and how they were able to really build community, build their brands, and make money using Shorts. So I don't want to take up this time because you guys have such insight and wisdom. I want them to all hear about the amazing things you do. Can you guys introduce yourselves and tell us about your journey and the type of content you create? Yeah. So. I have been making videos on the internet for 10 years now. I just hit my 10 year anniversary back in November of when I started my YouTube channel. And let's say it's gone through a couple iterations. I started loving that, you know, that Ryan Higa, Kev Jumba, like they're little YouTube vloggers and they're amazing. And I was like, I'm going to do that. And I was terrible at it. Uh, and then I saw Casey Neistat and I'm like, this is the greatest man I've ever seen in my life. I'm in love with him. I'm going to be a daily vlogger. And then I went two weeks and I was like, this is just bad. Like, this is upsettingly terrible content to watch. And in between then and there, I started to do a little bit of stand-up comedy. I learned through making content that I just am an entertainer. It's something that I am passionate about. And uh, doing stand-up, I learned a lot of improvisational skills and I picked up some impressions. And one of them being Mickey Mouse. So I bought this really weird little puppet and I started to make content with it. I uh, didn't know how to edit long form on YouTube, I was really bad at it. So when Vine came around, I was like, let's, let's tiptoe, let's dabble in, a, in this space. So I made a bunch of those for years, and then that's, you know, that's not really around anymore. We can't really make a Vine. Uh, so I moved back to YouTube for a little bit and was grinding, trying to come up with a strategy. And I worked on, oh my gosh, 13, 14, 15 different series that none of them are available to see on the internet anymore. And eventually, uh, shorts came around. I'd been dabbling in the short, for, uh, the short form side of content across social medias. And when YouTube, the, the greatest behemoth in the industry, said, we're going to lean into shorts content, I knew that that's a space I needed to be in. And I joined it. And joining YouTube shorts completely changed my trajectory as a creator in August of 2021. So right a little while ago, I had just hit 10,000 subscribers. By the end of that month, I hit 100,000. And then by November, like the first week, I'd already hit a million subscribers. And now I'm sitting at a beautiful 1.6 million. It is my entire job. Uh, it's, you're going to hear a lot from these amazing creators. And we've already heard from amazing people talking about their relationships with brands and with companies. But I'm, I'm here to tell you that those are important. Those are pivotal. But me as a creator, I've really carved into my platform is my main source. It's my primary source of income up until this point. I haven't really delved into the brand side. But YouTube has made this uh, possible for me. So big fan of shorts. And I'm excited to share more with you guys. So my name is Hannah Worling. You can find me on all my socials at Hannah Worling. Um, and I do mostly fashion and hair tutorials. And my journey is actually quite a long one. So when I was younger, as I'm sure many of you guys are, like I was really interested in photography and videography. I was always making like little YouTube videos and like little music videos and stuff from like elementary school and middle school. And so that made me want to basically pursue a degree in film. So I went to Chapman University to Dodge College and I studied television writing and production there. And I had a really great time and through that I started writing more. And I basically immediately out of college I sold a feature film for a development deal which was amazing and a wonderful opportunity but you know it's getting more competitive. Like entertainment in itself is a very very competitive field so I was like you know what if I'm going to compete with everybody else, I want to have a built-in audience. And so that's why I started creating content in the first place. So literally two weeks before the pandemic started, on March 1st, 2020, I basically decided my, to myself, I was like, I'm going to start creating two short form videos a day. And I'm going to do that for a month. And I'm going to see where that gets me. And my content after that just really took off. And it was then that I started to find out about YouTube Shorts. And I started posting long form weekly on YouTube as well. Um, and since then, I have also, like Hassan, been able to make it my full time job. And that has just been an amazing experience. And so going from somebody who is in traditional entertainment to where I am now as a full time content creator, like it's a very different path than I was expecting. But I wouldn't want to be doing anything else. I love that. And I love how you mentioned that you were doing two a day and mm -hmm. seeing how that went and how it's important to be consistent. Yes. Can you guys share your shorts 
strategy? Like, what's your advice for them getting started? How many should they be posting? What should they be doing from your perspective? You know, what did you do? You know, this isn't, you know, people want to know, like, how did you get to where you are? And let's be real, with you being able to use your phone now and create content, you have an opportunity, your Samsung Galaxy phones, you have an opportunity <laughs> to really create more content consistently. We've heard that a lot. So I wanna know, like, how has that changed the game for you now, being able to use your phone to create and post and share? Yeah, so my content strategy, it is absurd, it is insane, and I can recommend it to those who have the bandwidth to do it, but not by any means is this the blueprint. I make eight videos a day every day, and I've been doing that since March of last year, so we're rounding a year of this madness, and in doing so, I've built quite the content library, so some days there are some remasters and some reposts getting, uh, getting out there, but the biggest thing with shorts when you're entering it is that that algorithm needs to learn you. So it takes a little bit of time, but if you're consistent with it, it, it will pay off. It's just, it's one of those things where I've had a lot of friends, I've been helping transition from other social medias where, in all honesty, the monetization's not there for them to make that their living. They're still having to work multiple jobs and everything to support themselves while pursuing their passion. I've been really focused on getting them over to shorts and the, the most disheartening thing was, hey, this is taking me a while. It's taking me a couple months. Like, what's going on? These views aren't getting there. But once it hits, once that beautiful, you'll see it in their beautiful, robust YouTube Studios app that I cannot recommend more downloading just to watch analytics and learn how to use it, it is such a moment where you look at this beautiful line and you're like, this is it. This is my, my moment. I'm going to capitalize on this and I'm going to make this my life. And that's exactly what I did. And so many of my creator friends have done. So it is finding a posting cadence that works for you for consistency. It's also realizing that the shelf life of a short form piece of content is different than a long. So don't be, back in the day, it was really taboo. Don't ever repost a piece of content if you've made that, that it's up there and you can't do anything. But what if it was a bad day for your audience? I've had videos that have gotten upwards of 40 million views on my first upload. And I'm gonna let you guys know right now, I uploaded it four more times. And oh, diminishing returns, only 20 million views. It was still like life-changing amount. That one video got me over 145,000 of my subscribers. So it's an incredible thing to, to look at a piece of content that has that forward momentum and that that content is yours. It's yours not just on YouTube, across social media, but you own that and you can repackage it and give it back out. So that's a big part of my content strategy. It's, I created volume and my goal, I'm gonna continue to do content in this capacity, obviously pivots, uh, different formats of this for the, uh, the main channel, but building that archive, right? So that I can always have something to fall back on. Right now I've been busy at this beautiful creator collective, getting to know all of you wonderful people, hearing people like Colin and Samir talk about their journey, which was just, God, I was getting impacted. Like, I'm here to talk, and I was like, wait, I need to be talked to more. This is incredible. I learned so much. And the people you're going to hear from, like, Andrew Ray, Binging with Babish coming up, that, like, this is, this is just a wild experience, but I've been so busy. I haven't had time to make too many videos. So I've been hitting the archive, creating new versions of older videos, and throwing them right back up on YouTube so I can stay ahead of the course. Yeah, I think that YouTube, a lot of us can agree, is kind of the gold standard for social media. I mean, it really did, like, it was a big basis for video content. And um, I think it can be really intimidating for a lot of people, especially the long form content on YouTube. Like it can be hard to get started with that, especially if you're a new creator. A lot of creators now who do long form content, they have their DSLR, they have their really high level equipment, and that can be really, really challenging. So, I mean, now that you have a phone in your pocket, like you have literally no excuse not to be creating content today. And I think, again, and for me, like when I first started on YouTube, I was doing long form content and I wasn't getting that many views. I had like so many followers on other platforms and for some reason I was just struggling to get that same following on YouTube and I was creating content for about a year and I only had like a thousand subscribers after a year. I posted weekly, I was super consistent, I tried to do everything that everyone was telling me to do and it still wasn't quite hitting and that's where YouTube Shorts came in for me. I found out about YouTube Shorts through a previous manager that I had and they were like, you have to get on this, you have to get started with this and I was like okay like I'll try it out I started posting and to be honest I wasn't seeing that much traction and that was really discouraging for me I mean it was hard to feel like I was doing it consistently and not seeing anything happen and not seeing those numbers and so I stopped doing it for a little bit I mean I think a lot of us can relate to kind of stopping our content and then coming back to it and 
it wasn't until I saw another creator that I had been following for a while and I saw her content and it had just taken off. I mean, she had, she went from having basically no subscribers at all to having like hundreds of thousands of subscribers. And I was like, this is crazy. I was like, okay, if she's doing this, I can do this. So I was like, let me get on this. Let me just give it another shot. And so I started posting again and it, you know, I was okay. I was like, I'm just going to take everything aside. I'm not going to look at the numbers. I'm just going to start posting. And I did. And it did take a little bit of time. But the, this next time, I was consistent with it because I saw the growth that I was able to, that other creators were able to get. So basically, after a little bit of time, I also kind of hit that big, like high trajectory with my numbers. And I went from having that thousand subscriber mark after a year to now having nearly 300,000 subscribers, which is an insane amount of growth. And that was literally with only within a few months. So, you know, I can't recommend yeah, <laughs> you doing no. YouTube shorts enough. That's amazing. And I think that what's so great about you guys is talking about that consistency that's right for you. Um, and, you know, Hassan, you said you post a lot. I want to know, where are you guys getting your inspiration from? Because there must be a lot going on in there. You must have a million ideas. But, like, where is that coming from? Is that just, like, in your heart and soul? Or tell us where you go for inspo. So we're living in a world where back in the day it was like, oh, a trend's going to be around for a month. And then it was a week, two weeks. And now it's literal three days. And then trends come and they disappear and they're the height of the internet for those three days and they're gone. So the greatest way to keep up is to be a consumer. I think that a lot of our greatest and biggest creators are doing amazing work, but a lot of them have lost touch with like that ground floor, that being a content consumer as well as a content creator. And for me, that's a huge part of what I do. A big part of my, uh, my current style of content is this duet style reaction videos because I think that it's, uh, people wanna watch the same viral video a hundred times. They want to send that video to their friends. They want to do it. So let me repackage it. Let me put my comedy on top of it. So mine is the video that you're sending to everybody instead of theirs. And it still shares their awesome story, but it also has mine on top of it. And that only came from being a heavy, heavy content consumer. So while I'm, I'm a creator and it's my full-time job, I make sure that at all times I'm still a consumer. I'm still watching the daily uploads when Casey Neistat uploads, when Philip DeFranco does, Colin and Samir. I'm looking for those people to look towards and that's the best thing. Watch, watch not just for trends, not just for the research, but for yourself too, just to be in touch with everything. Yeah, so for me, I definitely don't have an intense and upload schedule. I try to upload shorts daily, and then I also have continued to do long form weekly as well. For me, that's what works, and I think it's about what works for you, what you can be consistent with, because for me, I always tell creators the most important thing is consistency. So whatever cadence you're able to be able to upload, do that and do it consistently, because it really is about that long-term career, and I love helping creators basically look to that long-term term and being able to see that long-term goal and you know you don't want to get burned out even though some of us can do the eight uploads a day I mean not everybody can do it but again like when you have that like video capability in your pocket and you're able to like create content at any time I mean that is huge and that can also help with being able to upload more consistently I know that Colin and Samira also touched on that as well um, as far as inspiration goes for me I mean like Hassan said it is about consuming content you have to be a consumer and you have to learn your craft in order to do it but I also think um, just figuring out what you would want to see. Like, what do you want to see? What do you want to have out there that isn't out there already? That can be a huge one. And then also just listening to your audience. I mean, I get so many DMs every day of, you know, my content is focused on young girls, mostly 13 to 24, being like, you know, I have this top, like, what can I do with it? Like, I need help. And so seeing what they want to see and being able to feed into that and help them, like, have that confidence and like feel good about the clothes that they have and feel good about their body. I mean, for me, that's huge. So having that underlying message for yourself is really, really a big deal when you're a creator. And it really does help, you know, keep you going. I love how you talk about community. That, that right there is like the buzzword today. I feel like everyone's talking about it. Colin and Samir said, community is a product and you guys have built communities but you guys are also part of a really great community which is the YouTube shorts community can you tell me about that and your experience in it so far life-changing that's the buzzword that's the one thing that I'll say right off of rip I 
joined the Shorts Creator community and I'd never been in something like that where I'm so connected to creators, but not just in a, we're gonna sit here while somebody reads from a slideshow, it's we're gonna read from a great slideshow and then followed by like, let's interact, let's talk, let's communicate, let's learn from each other, let's help each other. I'm here speaking today because there were questions that were asked that I knew the answers to, so I was able to be like, hey guys, I actually think it's it's this, this, and this. That's gonna be helpful for your content, that's gonna be great. And the, the, the people who head that creator community over at YouTube, they're not just passive listeners and employees and cogs in a machine, they're participants in engaging with the community and they'll sit there and they'll watch and like, okay, this person has a voice that we want to elevate to elevate all of our creators. So I'm sitting here at this beautiful Samsung event in New York City, which is just a little pipe dream of mine to be a YouTuber in New York. Casey Neistat inspired that and I'm here. And it's purely because of that shorts creator community giving me opportunities like this and to make lifetime friends. I, like Hannah, Hannah does fashion content. There was no way in the universe we were ever just gonna connect and be buddies. We literally hop on FaceTime at least once a week at this point. We'll yeah, literally- Probably every like two days. Basically, <laughs> if I'm editing, we're just sitting on the phone on FaceTime and working together and hanging out. And that's, this is like one of my best friends and it's not just Hannah, it's so many other people that like I really, I read my DMs a thousand times more than I used to because I'm looking for creators to help because I'm so excited about their product in a way that like, I'm not getting paid to say this. I'm just wanting <laughs> creators to be in this space and to like, to thrive. I did content creation for 10 years and during those 10 years, there was nobody offering the roadmap. Nobody was really offering advice. It was very gate kept knowledge. Well, you have the ability to grow. It's for you, you better not share it because then it's gonna be gone for everybody. And now we're living in this boom where we're realizing there's more than enough money, there's more than enough eyes in the field of entertainment so we can help all of our peers and every connection we have to, to grow and the shorts creator community has been the place where I've made the most connections in my life. I don't live in a buzzy city like New York or Los Angeles. I live in Birmingham, Alabama and I love it there but it's a thing where I'm not gonna rub shoulders with a lot of YouTubers and stuff like this so I've been able to connect via the phone, get close and then I, I take like bi-monthly trips to, to Los Angeles now just to see my creator friends work on stuff, connect with more people. So it's changed my entire life, it changed my entire outlook on everything. Yeah, I literally cannot say enough about the YouTube Shorts community. If you guys are not already posting on Shorts, start doing it so that we can get you guys involved in the community because, I mean, literally everybody I talk to, I brag about it. I mean, the whole team is incredibly helpful at YouTube, but not just that, also being able to connect with creators. I am somebody who is very, very extroverted and a huge challenge when I started full-time with content creation is that I didn't have coworkers. It made it really, really, hard for me to stay motivated and feel good about my content and to be able to bounce ideas off of. I mean, like when you're just by yourself, I mean, I work by myself in my apartment and it can get really, really lonely when you have that situation. And so having other people to be able to not only lift you up, but be able to learn from as well is huge. I mean, that's why things like content creator houses exist because you want to be able to have those peers who can be there to help you, to give you advice and I mean, that's exactly what the YouTube Shorts community is doing. I mean, there's so much valuable information out there and sometimes you also don't know what to listen to. I mean, there is so much advice online and a lot of it is conflicting. And so when you have a community of your peers who can give you real world and real time updated information and you can learn from them in that way, I think it can be really, really powerful and really beneficial to you as a creator and to the growth of your content. And it really feels like it's kind of like having these sessions every day. Yes. You know, being inspired by one another. When you hear the stories and people share how they got to a million, I mean, yeah. that I think, Hassan, when you share that, like everyone wants to know, like how tell us how. And to be able to do that, like every week, I think is so magical because that's what gets everyone yes. talking and, and keeps people motivated. Like how yes. you shared, you kept going because you saw other people seeing yes. success. And sometimes it can be hard to get in contact with those people. I mean, I'm sure everybody can also relate to the experience of reaching out to your favorite creator online, DMing them or DMing them multiple times and never hearing anything back from them. Even if you're trying to just ask them a question or get a little bit of advice, but this is an opportunity for you to be able to meet people like myself, like Hassan, who are creators who are having success and being able to talk to them face to face, which is huge. I mean, no DM can really encapsulate what it's like to be on a video call with somebody and being able to ask questions again in that kind of real time environment. 
Yeah, and I, I love that you guys are so close. I love that you guys have yes. become so close. But, you know, <laughs> we love community. We also love money. And you guys are both in the Shorts <laughs> Fund. You guys have seen a lot of success there. Can you tell me about the Shorts Fund and your experience in it? I just talk about general monetization. Just I go mean, in yeah, go for it. But then, you know, well, you're gonna, give me, the give me is the big specifics. Because I'm on. sure it's, people want to know. So as a creator, money is a big thing because it's often touched as like, it used to be this taboo. No one would say the exact amount that they make. No one will touch on this. And it's, it's really gatekept information. I'm a big believer in forget gatekeeping. We're all coworkers. We're not competitors. And what we share helps us elevate ourselves in the eyes of brands, companies, and helps all of us do more. If everyone learns together, then they have to learn to be better to us. So been a huge part of everything I do. Uh, across other social medias and platforms that I've been on for years, I made a total of $20,000, which was awesome. It's great that I had that opportunity. From YouTube, from August to December, uh, I made $110,000. And a big chunk of that was because of the Shorts Creator Fund. It caps out at $10,000 a month, but it, it's, its barrier of entry is so different than the other social medias. It really feels like we are being paid for our views in a very real, tangible way. And it's something that they put a lot of time and care to, to work on with us and to hear our feedback because what they've built right now is incredible. It is robust, but YouTube made a great announcement earlier this year about their plans and everything. And that's stuff they're focused on, more monetization opportunities, different things to do. And that's something that platforms, they shy away from even talking about it. So we're living in this world where there's five different key platforms to be on, and this is the one that said we are creator first, we're monetization first. I was a full-time realtor. I'm a realtor in Alabama. That's a, it's a tough gig out there. And to, to go from that to just fully living in the creator space has been the, it's the lifetime, it's a dream. It is, it is completely a dream. Like I can't, I don't even really, like I'm processing that I'm here, but I don't really get that I'm here right now. And speaking with you guys and about YouTube, because it's just, it's such an incredible system and they're always making pivots. So I, you know, a lot of my monetization comes from the short form and through shorts, through shorts growth and things like you make a bunch of beautiful, amazing, lovely shorts and you can throw it into a nice compilation video and throw that up into YouTube long and get that ad sense as well. Cause that's something that I've been around since the Vine days. So my videos have been on YouTube since the dawn of time on channels that have nothing to do with me. And uh, now those compilations, say Hassan Kader brightly at the top and it's my stuff and it is a huge part of my income as well as that shorts creator bonus. Uh, I think early on I got two, like $4,000 and then $5,000 and then into that beautiful mid-sember time, which I think we all know as creators. That's the best time of our lives. Oh my goodness, we have to work super hard, but man, does it pay off uh, during that time period. In November, I think I made $8,700, and then December got the full $10,000 bonus, and then in January, I clocked out another 8K, and that is on top of what I make in AdSense, and it makes this sustainable. It pays my bills, guys. I got four cats, like I have to feed. <laughs> it's like a lot of animals. I had to get that super cool litter box that cleans this up. It's a lot of poop, okay? It's a, it's a scary situation, but YouTube makes it manageable. Like, actually, it's like a real thing that they, they take care of my cats. Yeah, I mean, I think that the YouTube Shorts Fund is, it's a game changer for creators. I can tell you guys exactly how much I have made off of other platforms, and that is zero dollars. And so having something like the YouTube Shorts Fund where you had the ability to make up to $10,000 a month is insane. And the thing is that, that it doesn't stop there with YouTube. You also have the opportunity to monetize off of long form as well. So being able to have both of those things integrated into that platform is an incredible opportunity. The other thing is that there are creators like Hassan who it can be difficult to get brand deals. Um, it can be really, really hard. I mean, I do a lot of brand deals myself, but even that in itself, like I know that especially when you're first starting out, it can be really difficult to kind of get started and know what to do and how to email those brands. So having the YouTube Shorts Fund to really kick off your career in that way and allowing you to not only be as creative as you want because you don't need to worry about what brands are thinking about you, but also just allowing you to focus on your content and maybe not be working that second job, not be doing the side hustle that you were originally doing because you're making money off of something like the YouTube Shorts Fund is really, really huge. I mean, the more time that you have to create your content, the more 
content you're going to put out, the more views that you're going to get. And that just is a never ending cycle, right? So you're going to become more successful and you're just going to have more and more opportunities. So I think having the YouTube Shorts Fund is incredible for creators. And I think being able to use that with the long form monetization is just, I mean, it can't get better than that. I love that. I'm sure everyone here, everyone watching at home is like, okay, okay, I'm in. But like, what, how, do I, how do I get started? What's the advice? You guys are the experts. People want your advice. They want to know if I'm starting today, what, what should I do? What, what do you have to tell the community here? You find what works for you at this moment present in time. You find the content that you are the most comfortable making, that you enjoy the most, and that is engaging your audience the most. And what you do now doesn't necessarily have to be what you do forever. So I'm doing this very impression driven, really comedic content, but I'm here talking about it. I don't think I've sounded like a weird impression comedian so far. Um, it's like I do an impression, now. I'm not gonna do that. Uh, it's, it's, I, I know that in the future, I'm planning pivots. I've launched a separate podcast that's a whole separate entity from what I'm doing and, and making concessions. So, you know, there's a lot of time where we feel boxed in as a creator. We do one thing, we get known for one thing, and then we're gonna burn out doing that one thing forever. And then you'll see a lot of people post those, where have I been for four months video, right? The thumbnail is kind of grayed out. It's like, they're like <laughs> a little sad. You're wondering like, what happened? But, uh, you know, that, that is something that's happened to YouTubers. We've gotten to see this, like the, the history of YouTube, the legacy of YouTube. We've gotten to watch the whole thing. And because of that, we have things to avoid. We have things to watch out for. Colin and Samir really just highlighted their whole track of like mistakes, learning experiences, and how it led them to where they're at now. So here we are, we get to look at all that information. So knowing that you can really fall into a niche and, and do something great with it, but through that, highlight your personality, highlight what you are comfortable putting out there, and then lean further into that down the road is gonna be such a huge thing. The, the biggest thing we talked about earlier is always gonna be the biggest thing in this medium is consistency. These algorithms that are being created weekly for every new social media and YouTube, it is, it is built upon creating content that is bringing people back every day. Every day they want to click on one of your videos, one of Hassan Kader, Hannah Warling, or maybe one day Tiffany Malley. We don't know. She she'll be a YouTuber too. But, you know, they want to click Starting on, today. Right? This is I, the launch. You guys inspired me. I'm in it. I'm in it to win it. Right. So we... You know, you, you want to have that consistency, but with that consistency, I, the, the term cadence is so important. Finding that rhythm, that balance. I'm doing eight videos a day every day. My friend, How Easy, he's an incredibly large creator now. We were neck and neck, and he's doing one a day, and my man had two million subscribers yesterday, which is huge and incredible incredible feat and he's just doing one skit video a day it's higher production than what i'm capable of doing at this point or what i'm doing with my current channel and it's it's a whole different market but he's getting the views he's getting the opportunities he's getting uh to do it so finding your cadence find what makes sense for you what makes sense for your audience really leaning into it and then during the way like make sure that the early stages with youtube shorts they go by really fast like i being at 100,000 subscribers for me didn't last more than two weeks. And I think I was already at two and then three. So I didn't get to like live in that bubble. So really enjoy it. Talk to your fans, build communities. I have a discord that is a big part of everything that I do. My, my brand outside of like Hassan Kader is called Bad Days. Your bad days are your best stories. I live by that whole mantra. And these people have invested in that mantra. They've invested in me. We've built things together. There's several of them that have gone on to become creators that I'm coaching through YouTube Shorts as well because I think that they have the ability to do great, amazing stuff because we finally have a platform. And one thing that just popped up into my head was, you know, years ago we had people like PewDiePie come up in the gaming space. PewDiePie, Markiplier, Jacksepticeye, they, they changed the rhythm of YouTube. YouTube had an algorithmic shift into a, a more longer format of content and it pushed those Let's Plays, right? And I bet all of us are like, I wish we were back in 2012 making gaming videos. Like we wanna be 100 million subscribers, be PewDiePie. This is your opportunity. This is the first time in years, in my opinion, YouTube has created an, an ability for you to, to really latch onto the short form content, use it to create explosive growth, become that macro creator, and then do whatever it is you love. Because if you love it, you're going to make something amazing for it, and people are going to love it. And you're going to continue to connect and engage. So take this moment in history. Take this, this time to just go for it. Yeah, I mean, to make it back off of what he just said, um, just do it. And I know that sounds really, really simple and it's easier said than done, but the first step is always just to create content in the first place. And if you guys are a little bit shy about it, like I am, you can do what I did, which is when I first started creating content, when I talked about challenging myself with those two videos a day for a month, um, I didn't tell anybody. I created an account, I didn't tell 
anybody at all what I was doing and I just started posting. And it wasn't until people started finding me and they were like, Hannah, like, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> like I didn't know that you were doing this. And I was like, yeah, like you found me on the internet. Um, and so I think like if you are a little bit uncomfortable, maybe even just create a new account like all together. And that way you can be yourself completely. You can test out your content. And that kind of leads me into my next point, which is creating a format that works for you. Like Hassan said, people want to see a consistency in your videos and they want to see a format that you have all of my videos, they start with a question and then by the end of like the 15 to 60 seconds, I have answered that question. And that for me is just the easiest format and my, my audience, they know what to expect basically when I create my content. And so similarly with Hassan, like he does reaction videos and his reaction videos, they have a consistent format. So when you're first getting started, really test out your content. Don't be afraid to try new things. Don't be afraid to kind of go a little bit out of the box and then see what your audience is responding to. Once you kind of find that, then keep doing it. And then you're able to kind of catch that wave and have that exponential growth that Hassan was talking about as well where you kind of see your videos start to explode because your audience likes what you're doing. And it basically encourages your audience to watch what they like and what they like to watch is you. I mean, that is beautiful. <laughs> it's obvious when you guys talk about it, it's so clear that you're passionate yeah. and it's authentically you. Like, no one else can do what you guys are doing because it's so, like, your heart and soul and everything you believe. So how can people access that for themselves? Yeah. I know we, people have been asking that throughout these sessions, but, like, what, do you guys have advice? Like, Hassan, how did you come up with Mickey Mouse and doing these um, your takes on different videos. How That's a really polite way to put what, <laughs> what kind of content I make. If you guys have seen it, it is a little bit more on the uh, the vulgar side of humor. And uh, how I really, I don't know that, I like to think I'm like a really nice person, but I am an improvisational comedian. I've worked, like, when I do stand up, I have floating bullet points in my head. I don't have a set structure of what I say every time. And I just weave my way through it in the most comfortable way possible. And that's how I engage in everything that I do in life. So when it came to this content, how was I going to differ from everything else that I was doing? Right. So I have this impression-based content. You have this very iconic character. How do I put a spin on it? That's weird. So I make him a degenerate. I make him weird. I make him insane. I, I, I pull the strings with it and I use that improv comedy. Most of my videos, if not all of them, are, are one takes. I do it in one go. If the video's a minute long, that's how long it took me to create that piece of content, uh, minus editing and then like the chopping up and all the other stuff in between. But hey, I'm doing that in a one take because it's so authentically me and I was able to like tap into what is my very dark side of humor, but in a way that I feel less weird about being like super mean in a really funny way that everyone's approving of and happy about, but like leaning into it into, into character-driven humor for me was great. It gave me the avenue to do my improv in a way that I'd never really expected to do it. I didn't expect to be at home making improv puppet videos. Like, hey, puppets freak me out, guys. It's weird. <laughs> I, I don't get it, but I'm leaning into it, and it's been so much fun. It's one of those things where having that impression has been my party trick for the last 15 years of my life, and before it was super exciting, and then it was like, oh, do I have to do it in front of these people? Like, okay. You just like have a friend pull you over. Hey, can you do the voice for them? It's like, no. I can't, I'm sorry. Uh, and they now, gotta go to YouTube Shorts for that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then and now finally, like I kind of fell back in love with doing it. For the first time in so many years, I'm excited about it. I used to never have it on my public Instagram because I'm like, I don't want people from high school to see this. Like, I don't care what people from high school think now. Since May to now, I've been posting that stuff all over there and just being like, hey, this is me. I'm weird, I love it. Let's, let's have fun and laugh together. So it's been the experience just finding your ability to, to create, fall in love with what you do, and it, that's it. Like Colin and Samir touched on it so well because they did stuff that was fun and innovative for them, like working on that lacrosse channel. And then they found, they, they sat in their niche and they're like, we love helping creators, we love being Colin and Samir, sitting, having a conversation. And then they made that what they're doing now. And I can't stress leaning further into that. Like right now I'm in iteration 15 of what Hassan Kader looks like on the internet and you can bet your butt there's gonna be about a thousand more between now and when I'm wrapped up being a content creator. So just go with the flow of life. Be a creator, be a creative and always just learn and love what you're doing. 
Yeah, for me, I think that it's all about finding your purpose as a content creator because it's easy to just create videos that are fun and enjoyable to watch and entertaining. But I think that one of the most important things is like, why are you doing what you're doing? And that's the thing that's going to keep you going. I mean, like I mentioned, like I did start creating content because I wanted to basically sell scripts. And that was something completely different because it's like turned into something that's so much more for me. Now, you know, I have really found my purpose as a creator and that's you know for me helping young girls like a lot of my audience is 13 to 24 years old feeling good about their bodies and a lot of content creators who are kind of in the fashion in the hair niche and the makeup niche they really like push a lot of products on their young audience and you have to be able to like have this amount of money to buy this and you have to have the newest thing to be able to be that girl or like be popular or, like look good and for me like I wanted to show them that they could feel good they could look good and they could be confident with exactly what was already in their closet with the tools that they already had at their disposal and for me like that is just so empowering and it's so beautiful to get messages and comments every single day from young girls being like, you help me so much with my confidence. You really make me feel good about my body. You like help me feel good in what I have to wear. So for me, like that is my purpose as a creator. And I think for all of you who, you know, are maybe up and coming creators or aspiring creators, it's really important to think about what you want to do and why you want to do it. Because when you are up at 3 a.m. trying to edit your video for the next morning to be on schedule, even though you've had had a really, really long day, or maybe you're working a second job like I did when I was starting content creation, it's going to be hard for you to push through. It's really, really mentally challenging to be a creator. And then when you're getting hate comments online, I mean, that can be really challenging as well, or hateful messages. It can be really, really hard for you to keep going because it's really demoralizing. It's really demotivating. But then when you kind of have that North Star that you look back to and say, this is why I'm creating, my content has a purpose that is what is going to keep you going and that's what's going to help you be consistent when you do have those tough upload schedules. So for me, I think that that is just like the absolute most important thing. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm inspired. The <laughs> Tiffany Matlub YouTube short channel is going to be popping off today. <laughs> We're so all the content um, Because you guys just have a way to really explain the community, the feeling, and just being yourself. I think that's yes. really what this is all about, is you being yourself, love what you experimenting, do. loving what you do, um, and not being afraid. Yes. You know, being yes. fearless. Well, you guys, it was always, always a pleasure chatting <laughs> with you guys. And where can everyone find you? Obviously on your channels, but... You can find me everywhere at Hassan Kader. Yeah, that's how you pronounce it. Very weird spelling. I know. Uh, but you can find me everywhere at Hassan Kader. And a big thing that I want to like touch on right here at the very tail end of this is that if you love creators and there's people in this space that like, you've heard me talk and like, okay, something you said really latched on, I want to know more about it reach out to me, reach out to everybody you admire. When I saw Colin and Samir were at this event, the first thing I did was I DM'd the Colin and Samir account, their individual accounts, and I wrote them an email. And then when I chatted with them, as soon as I got here, uh, Samir was like, yeah, you're the, the Mickey guy. Like we had like an instant connect. I introduced myself, showed my name, and that's a statement, right? So people, we read our DMs, we access, we that's how you network and communicate. So if you've learned anything today or over this whole entire time, you see anybody you want to know more about, reach out to them, anybody that you admire. That is some advice that Philip DeFranco gave about YouTube 10 years ago, back when YouTube replies were a thing, and that was making creators really rise to the top, is that send your stuff to people that you love. Reach out to people that you love and that they're gonna reach back. Cause like I've had people reach out to me like, oh my God, you know, I don't, I host a show on, uh, on a channel called Comic Story and I grew up watching that channel and I was like obsessed with it. And now every Tuesday I'm sitting there reviewing my favorite TV shows with them. And that's only cause at one point I shot a DM. I was like, hey guys, you should do YouTube shorts. It's literally what my DM said. It was on Discord. I was like, Benny, you can't believe it. This is going to be crazy for your channel. And they're working on a shorts content plan right now, and I've gotten really close to them. So reach out. It doesn't even have to be in your niche, because what I make and what I do on there and what I'm speaking here, nothing has anything to do with each other. But hey, it all exists, and it's all me. So that. And uh, yeah, at Hassan Kader, H A S. And fun fact, you reached out to me. He slid into my DMs, and <laughs> that's the best way to put it, right? No. Yes, yeah. I, 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 he, he asked about the shorts community, and I was like. 
come through. And oh, this and is I was motivated. I wrote her a paragraph, and she didn't get back to me at first because Tiffany gets DMs, guys. It's crazy. So I swiped up every time. She like posted a picture of some coffee or something with a song, and I was like, this is my favorite song. Love that. And then she's like, sorry, I never saw that message, and connected me, and now I'm here. Like, mm -hmm. It's all together. Sometimes Reach out. you don't see the the other box. You don't see those messages. So I love the tip of like responding to other things. Yes. And you know, and if someone responds to my coffee, you know, I'm gonna respond back. <laughs> yeah. You can find me at Hannah Whirling on pretty much all platforms. It's just H uh, A N N A H W A R L I N G, and I would love to connect with you all as well. So if you have any questions or you want to reach out to me, I do actually read all of my DMs, and I do actually read all of my messages. So please feel free to reach out. And you can probably also find me by just searching hashtag outfit hacks on any <laughs> platform as well. And I will be like the first video up there. So i um, looking forward to connecting with all of you and connecting around YouTube shorts. Thank you all. That's Thank it for you. today's YouTube shorts discussion. Yeah. Thank you.